punishments are going to get really draconian for this. I am, unfortunately, the judge and the executioner as well. And if you go on doing a lot of stuff, they'll put you on the gallows, wheel you into my study, and I'll press the switch and you'll drop and dangle. Will you sit down, please? I call this assembly specifically to talk about really a whole series of events that have occurred during the last 36 hours. I think actually they are the culmination of other events that have taken place before that, some of them. But I think it's easier for you and for me and for clarity to stick to the last 36 hours. I don't normally when I get into one of these situations, mention names. But I'm going to this time, because it is absolutely essential that when this assembly is over, everybody in the school knows precisely where he or she stands, and incidentally, where the common room and I stand. The starting point is yesterday afternoon, when I am contacted by Mr. Exxon to say that two boys in King Alfred House are in the cells in Taunton Police Station for shoplifting. Those two boys are Robson and Savage. Mr. Exxon went down, and when he got there, of course, Robson is over 17, Savage isn't. And under the law, if you are over 17, and the police catch you committing a criminal offence, they can interrogate you straight away, which they did. Robson had signed a statement to the police, and when Mr. Exxon arrived, Savage had to do the same. The fact, what they did, was the two boys went down the town and on the way conversed and made up their mind they were going to go on a shoplifting escapade. Savage suggested it. Robson carried a bag. Robson agreed. They went to three shops, Winkworth, Boots and Debenham. And at the first shop, Winkworth, Robson stole two pounds fifties worth of stuff. Um, Savage, a couple of books and a box of chocolates. They then went on to Boots, where, while Robson carried the bag to put things in, Savage stole over twenty pounds worth of goods from that shop. They then went on to Debenhams, where this time Savage stole some records. And at that point, he was caught by the shop detective. They were both arrested, and they were both put in the cells. The action that I have taken is to expel both boys. It's quite inevitable that I should do that. The school knows, as well as I, that we're not having stealing here. But that is nothing like the end of the story, as far as that's concerned. I don't know what the police are going to do. Uh, I can't stop the police proceeding as well. They say they're so angry about it, they may very well do so. I did say at that point, because I wanted to be merciful to Robson, that I would allow him to come back and do his own levels. And we were going to try and smuggle him in, to be quite honest, so that you couldn't see, so that I could have the best of the decision at the same time try and bring a little bit of mercy to Robson, particularly thinking of his family. His reward to me was to get out of the sand where I put him and end up on the roof of the girls' building in Hess. This was after midnight last night. And I thereupon expelled him from Kings for good and all for forever and said I never want to see him back here. He's lost his own levels in the That is that particular section of what is a pretty grim tale. You will remember that... But I rusticated three boys just before half term for a period of ten days because they had been to the Dolphin public house and I told the school to confine the drinking to the places that I had authorized. Two of those boys, I discovered, deliberately cut the Remembrance Sunday service. Two of the same boys, and they were Drew and Foxwell, and the punishment they've got for that is very severe because it amounts to downright disobedience. And in my book, if you've already had one punishment and you straightway flout, way, flout the authority of the school, you've got it coming. 
so they have written an essay on trust. They're gated indefinitely, probably for the rest of this term and maybe longer. They're working in the, in the kitchens at 7 o'clock in the morning every single day as, as a present to authority for wasting authority's time. They've got a doubled attention for the whole of the rest of this term and they're checking in every hour of the rest of this term to sign the book and that's for starters. I'm also writing to both their parents saying if they move another muscle I'd better be the end. That was only part of yesterday evening. I'd already by now missed the lecture that I was supposed to be entertaining school guests for a lecture on China when I find the following set of facts. But on Sunday night, all the following people were out drinking behind Hewishes. Robson, Savage, Fran Whitaker, Peerless, Dunsford, Sarah Sims Williams, Vanessa Ham, Mill, <laughs> Candida Townsend, Berry, Sarah Peacock. Two of those, Candida Townsend and Berry, were already gated. <laughs> So their package is that they're gated for 14 days, they're confined to their houses, and they will have regular roll calls every hour for doing that, and Candida and Berry will get another punishment, probably double from their housemasters for defying them if they're already gated, and I'm about to write to their parents and say if they do another thing, they'll get sacked as well. I, you may wonder why the last party didn't get rusticated like the other three. It's for the simple reason that I took the trouble to go down and look very closely last night with Mr. Vaughan at the exact premises where some of that drink came from. If that drink had come from the other side of a particular door, the whole of that lot would be rusticated now. You may say, what's the significance? The significance was that they got it from an off-license. The others were actually in the door. Now, I want the school to be quite clear that as of now, you are warned. They, I believe, I just can bring myself to believe, thought that, though doing what they knew was wrong, that I wouldn't ultimately construe it as bad as being in a pub. I have to stretch my mind a long way to come to that conclusion. It's a very, very photo decision, but I have managed to make it that. Plus the fact that it was Robson who got most of the drink and he can't have it. But I want you to be quite clear on this drinking issue from when I said at the start of term, stop the when I said at the start of term that I did not want you to drink except in the places authorised, I meant that and nothing, neither more nor less. And from now I shall treat anybody who's got bottles of drink in the school or brought drink into the premises or drunk behind Hewish's, or got drink from off licenses, or got drink from anywhere in the school during term time. As absolutely equivalent to the people who went into the Dolphin, and maybe worse, because I've now warned you again. You are not to go beyond what you are allowed. And the reason is perfectly obvious, because it is sensible. The parents I had to explain to this last night totally agreed, and so some other parents. I showed three lots of parents around yesterday. And they became aware of this ongoing situation. And I told them straight out, I said, if you think I'm too much of a fascist, don't send your child. They promptly entered the child. So there are some people in this world, other than I, my staff, who happen to believe in sensible standards. Now, Mr. Vaughan's done a lot of research and found, I think it's about 14 wine bars of one sort or another that are classified as authorised by King's standards. And you still just have the only beer bar in Somerset or Aden. That's enough. If this goes on, not only shall I punish severely the people who commit the offences, but I shall feel bound, in fairness to the other schools and the police and the magistrates and the people of Taunton, I don't think it's right to continue to take a privilege like that, which is a unique privilege in this town. I shall not be prepared to go on telling the magistrates I want the licence, because I shall think we're no better than the other schools and we've no jolly business to have them. And then you will end up as a non-drinking school altogether. If you irritate me sufficiently, I shall gate the whole school for a month, which I've done before. And that's the end of your drinking, and shut the beer pot. Now, it, on the whole of these matters, it is high time that the school, boys and girls, get, get their act together, as you say. Because, really, there are three options in this situation. The first option is that I just stand here like a great wet fish and let you become an absolutely floppy, feeble lot of individuals, and there's no chance of that. So we're left with two alternatives, and only two. Don't you
the first is that you, as a school, get back to square one where we've always been and think to yourselves, well, we've got to stop that coffee once. It's absolutely unnecessary. We've either got to get to our situation where we've been, where the staff and I, on the one hand, and you on the other, work together and realize that the only way to have a happy school is for everybody to trust each other. The other way is for you to go on trying to have the best of the trust system as you see it, have it both ways. Go around boasting about the glories of the trust system until it affects you and promptly break the rules, hoping you won't get caught. Now that is one that you can try if you like, if you want that system. Well, my, all I have to do then is to cancel all the nice things you were going to have. No pyjama parties, fun, games, amusements, and all the things of tolerance and understanding and, you know, a, a relaxed sense of humor situation. And deploy the market, uh, set out to catch you with every sort of trap, curtail your liberty so we know where you are, have roll calls all the time, and deploy my entire teaching staff. Uh, to our operating as sort of police officers, which is the old-style school. I cannot believe that that's what you want. But if I am given the choice of having a slack and indiscipline school or a police state, I'll have the police state, thank you very much. But I pray we don't get to that. But I have no intention, whatever, of allowing my staff to spend evening after evening going around, walking around police stations, public houses, dark alleyways, corridors, missing engagement, being incapable of teaching, like last night. It ended up with Dr. Mott, um, and me, and a housemaster, and Mr. Vaughan, and a whole lot of people, uh, trying to find these wretched boys who weren't in the sand, in case they did something else stupid and got into further trouble. Now this is simply not reasonable or fair, and it isn't worthy of you as a school. And I should think, I must say, I would have thought that the intelligence that you have in the sixth form would have caused you to feel fairly ashamed that all these third form, fourth form and fifth form boys are having to sit here instead of being taught, uh, listening to the headmaster castigating a fairly sizable percentage of what's supposed to be an intelligent English sixth form. All sixth form boys, pretty pretty. And it's resulted in a catalogue of misery for parents, two boys expelled, police charges, four people under a final caution, and about 25 to 30 people reporting every hour like tiny little boys in the old days. Now I, shall, I want to see now, in, I don't want to see, I'm going to see now, in the octagon room, all the prefects in this school, school or high school. And I shall put the matter to them as well, quite clearly. And you will show me, I don't want any statements, you will show me by your actions and the rest of this term which way you want it. And don't tell me afterwards you didn't know what I was going to do if you do. Because if you go near any illegal drink again, my God, you've got it coming. You really have. What I've said this morning is me at my most tolerant. You may not think it sounds like it, but it's an absolute paradise to what the next assembly will be like if you try me anymore, my friend. I'll see this brief at school and house in the octagon room now.